Hello everyone, my name is Mirna and on behalf of the Mindalia TV team, welcome to Mindalia live streaming, where thousands of people around the world gather to see the lectures and interviews organized by Mindalia TV. Today with us, Angel Rebo, CEO consultant, TV host, international public speaker, and president of the Wisdom for Kids Foundation is joining Sunny Chase. She is not only the host of this show, but also the host of ABC Solutionary Sundays. She is the feature writer and chief strategist for Whole Time Magazines, which is the longest running conscious life magazine in America. Sunny is a producer, moderator, and myth buster. Before starting with them, we want to remind you that Mindalia's mission is to share information that can help raise the level of consciousness around the world, and you can help us. Subscribing to our channel, leaving us a positive comment down this video, or sharing it with someone that you know that is going to benefit of the content that we're going to be talking here today. Also, while we are live streaming, like right now, we have the active chat. It's the screen that you're going to be seeing here on my side, and through there, you can interact with us. You can ask your questions. Uh, we just please ask you to follow the format, the word question in caps, and the actual question in relation with the conference today. Last but not least, Mindalia broadcasts it daily from Monday to Friday, actually, in Portuguese through Mindalia Televisão, Spanish through Mindalia Televisión, and English, as you already know, through Mindalia TV English. We invite you to visit our different channels to follow us. And we also want you to collaborate with us with your own valuable content. And for that, you can click the link that you're going to find on the top of our page. That link is going to take you to a form that you can fill out for our technical team to get in contact with you. I am not going to delay this any further. I am going to leave you with Sonny, Angel, and a very special guest that they are going to be bringing today, but this is the path. Welcome to Mindalia live streaming, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mirna, for the introduction. Uh, and uh, welcome, everybody, to Mindalia TV. And uh, good morning. Welcome, uh, Sonny. How are you today? I'm doing so great, and I'm so excited to be kind of going into the Christmas season now, into our giving and receiving season. And uh, I'm just, uh, I had a great Thanksgiving. Did you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I had a great Thanksgiving. I, I only had a, a small issue with my voice, but I'm, I'm full full on now again, full in again with my voice. So <laughs> that's, that's kind of challenging for someone that, that is on TV every single day, but that's what it is. <laughs> but the rest was awesome. The rest was well, awesome. I'm Actually, so... the, kids, the kids were enjoying it a lot. So. Well, you were so great about really pointing out to we Americans about the importance of taking one day to really focus our feelings of thanksgiving and gratitude and um, really receiving and what all that is about. And so I really took that into the day and I enjoyed it so much and I shared it with so many people. And I just think that now going into the Christmas season and really um, using that with so many things that are going on in the world and everything to find a way to be really um, following our hearts <laughs> and, um, and really being able to activate that in a real, real way, you know, in a real, real way. So I'm so grateful to be here with you today. And let me share, let me share a secret with you. Guess, guess how, how I was able to fix my, let's, let's say to fix my throat because I couldn't speak. Uh, the reason why I was such a bad, I mean, I, I was literally voiceless is because I went to a, to an Argentinian contest uh, of asado, which is like a barbecue in, in Miami. And the place was all over covered by, by smoke because there were so many asadores that it was really, really plenty of smoke. So I basically, after four or five days, I lost it. So the reason or the way that I was able to have my voice back, and I think it's relevant for today's conversation, is I would, bas I would basically, every, you know, a few times a day, I would become present completely in the now, just close my eyes, concentrating on my breath, and send all the love from my heart to my throat. And it was amazing how I, I while I was doing this, <clears throat> immediately my throat would change. And actually, uh, uh, inst inst instantaneously, I would start coughing and coughing because I was concentrating. But after a while, you know, I would feel much less pain. And I have to tell you, I have recovered completely my voice doing nothing but focusing my, you know, my, my, my love coming from my heart into my voice. I guess something, something, 
about this is that we're going to be talking about uh, today something really close because you have you brought actually a very 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 special guest today i did bring a very special guest today and you know everything is so perfect in the way that we do this show angel it's just so meant to be and the person that we're bringing on today, Baptiste de Pop, is not a person who's so easy to get. <laughs> so we, I am I am really, really grateful that he made time for us today. And um, I just want to say about him that not only is he a dear friend of mine, but a dear friend of many because he is a wise, brilliant, fabulous person um, who I was so grateful to meet some years ago when he did this book and movie called The Power of the Heart. Here, I have it here. <laughs> and um, the movie, when I first saw it, I was actually moderating it in Sedona. Uh, there was an event there called Sedona World Wisdom Days. And he was uh, one of the main speakers and we showed the movie there and everything. And when I saw the movie, I, um, I realized that I had never seen an example of forgiveness in my lifetime, nor do I ever think that I ever will again, that was portrayed in this movie. And it was by a woman named, I mean, the, the story was of the Rwandan genocide and told through the um, eyes and the experience of a woman named Immaculate Ilikaziba, who was in the Rwandan genocide experience. And what process she went through um, was it was nothing short of Jesus. And I say that with all love and respect and everything. And so I just felt that this was a message and there's so many more messages in this movie and book, um, but there were so many messages in this movie that I thought were, were just life-changing for any and all of us who ever see it. And so um, without further ado, I would really rather <laughs> bring on Baptiste and let him chat with us. And uh, so, that's just a little introduction to many, many things that we'll drop in as we chat with Baptiste today. So, Myrna, can we bring on Baptiste? <laughs> I think you're on, um, Baptiste. I, 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 think, I think I'm on, well, first of Yeah, all. he's in there. He's already with us. Welcome I, to Mandalia TV, Baptiste. It's a great so pleasure much. to have you. Thank you. Can, can everyone hear me okay? Absolutely. Beautiful. So, well, first of all, I want to thank you, Sonny, for your... Uh, very kind words. We've, we've been friends for a few years now, and um, I, I just cherish the friendship that we have. And um, yes, I mean, um, m m m I don't know if I pronounce it okay, Mandalia TV. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, 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 I've done a little bit of research on you guys, and I, I love what, what you are doing. Uh, and I think it's very important work what you're doing. So I'm, I'm, I'm very honored to be on this show. Thank you so much. Well, um, thank you for being here. You know, I'll let Angel jump in, I think. Thank you. Yeah, you know, I, again, I, how, how to say this? Um, you know, when you, since you are a kid, you feel like you have to hug everybody. You feel that immense power of love that, you know, let me just give you an example, Baptiste. There's a, there's a, after six years, there's a, a neighbor of mine that, he just his, he, he just sold, sold his, his house with his family and he's closing tomorrow so that means that he, his last day in the house was today and i happened to see him right and we had a little bit of a rough relationship in the beginning and but today when i saw him and i, I knew it was going to be the last time i was going to see, to see him and i had never shaken hands with him on anything i went there and i said i wish you the best uh, I want you to know that uh, you know we would uh, that, uh, please tell the rest of your family that we really really wish you the best for the rest of your lives and uh, if you need anything from us. But the last thing is we really love you and I've given him a hug. And give a hug in America is not just give a, giving a hug in a Latin country or even in Europe. It's a big thing, and he's remained speechless for the remaining. For the remaining of the time and and i have obviously respected that and i obviously i have just come back to my house and that's it but what is the power of the heart baptist well um it, it, it is interesting um what is the power of the heart well the premise is this um you know we have you know if you look at our ed education I, i'm european and if you look at, at our education i think in north america and south america 
and in the Latin world is the same, but it's very um, left brain oriented. It's rational, it's logical, it's linear. And um, so we've been taught to do everything with our, with our linear mind. And um, yet, if you look at all spiritual traditions and all religions, then in every spiritual uh, tradition and every religion, um, there, you know, it, there, there is so much content that speaks of the heart. G Jesus was speaking about the heart, and the Buddha was speaking about the heart, and Lao Tzu was speaking about the heart, and they all point to the heart as a source of wisdom that transcended uh, the linear, logical, rational uh, thinking. And um, I think the power of the heart is uh, an intelligence that transcends our linear thinking, but it's also an intelligence that um, is looking at everything from a much higher perspective. And um, if I would say what the uh, intelligence, intelligence or wisdom of the heart is, or the power of the heart is, if you would compare it with, with, with the mind, um, the best um, example I can give you is this. If you are on a boat on a river, and you are the mind, the linear logical mind, then you know from, from the perspective of the mind, you can only see the next bend, the next turn on the river. But if you are the heart, you can see the whole uh, river from source to sea. So you can see everything from a much higher perspective. And I think um, our biggest challenge is that we all know we have this heart. We all know we have this power of the heart, this intelligence of the heart, the wisdom of the heart, but we don't trust it. Uh, and, and the reason why we don't trust, this, trust it is because we are not taught how to um, access this intelligence um, and we can only learn to trust it if we start to experiment with it. So I think the power of the heart is an intelligence that is holistic, uh, that sees uh, everything from a unity perspective and that is, um, I think, coming from our soul, our, our, our higher self. Mm. Wow, yeah. incredible. Um, you said, um, uh, Sonny, that you, you had been supporting, you know, Baptiste and his movie for, for a very, very long time. What, would you, what did you see at that time, Sonny, that people were reacting after the screenings and after watching the movie? What was the main reaction you saw in their faces and in their hearts? The, um, the tears <laughs> is what I saw. And I saw the, their tears through my tears. Um, when I saw the movie with all the people, I saw the movie at first, and, and I'll say a little, a few things about the movie. The movie has many sort of stories that are woven together and um, edited and shot beautifully and told beautifully. So there are different elements, uh, there are different stories that I think open the heart in, in one way and another story that opens the heart in another way. It's like a beautiful, sort of bouquet or um, the table of food, you know, with, with savory and sweet and, and crunchy and smooth. I mean, all the different textures that we love and, you know, different people can be um, pierced <laughs> by different ways. It might be children, it might be animals, it might be uh, flowers, it might be, you know, a certain story. So with this movie, The Power of the Heart, I feel that it was something, it had something for everyone. Um, at the end of the movie, though, Angel, uh, I had seen the movie before just on my laptop and by myself. And that was so, you know, I loved it. I, th I thought it was really powerful. When I saw it in the movie theater with 200 people, at the end of it, God, I mean, it chokes me up even now. At the end of the movie, when the credits were rolling, it was my job to get on stage and introduce Baptiste and all that. And I just looked at the whole audience and I just said, oh, we just let's just take a breath because there were just no words after to go straight from that to yak, 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 didn't feel correct at all. So uh, that's one of, that's kind of a, an overall thing that I'd like to say about the movie and the, and the book too. And so I know we'll go deeper, but I, that's my sort of short answer, Angel. <laughs> Excellent. Baptiste, where did you, you know, where did you start all this? Where, where did this, the, where did this, where did this, uh, idea of yours of uh, publishing a book and, and, and having a, uh, a movie uh, so it, it, it is um, so I was a lawyer in this and uh, an attorney in the city of Amsterdam um, but I didn't feel fulfilled and um, 
I, I said, I, I don't think this is my purpose in life to, to, to be a lawyer for the rest of my working life. And what happened was that um, I was, I said, you know, if I want to you know, find my purpose in life, I better start looking for it. So what do you do these days if you want to find something? You go onto the internet and you Google it, right? So I started to Google, how can you find your purpose in life? And um, I, I found a video where Oprah Winfrey um, was speaking with Eckhart Tolle. Eckhart Tolle is the author of The Power of Now. And the video started with Oprah saying, "If I think there's nothing more important than finding your purpose in life. And Eckhart Tolle, he was sitting there and he nodded and he said, yes, um, but you cannot get there through thinking. And that was a big revelation for me because I always thought that, you know, thinking was the way to come to a solution, linear logical thinking. And Eckhart Tolle said, if you want to find your purpose in life, um, then you can ask yourself, what do I want? But a more powerful question would be, what does life want from me? So what does the, the bigger picture want from me? And um, he said, <clears throat> if you want to find answers to that question, then you have to go uh, into uh, uh, stillness. And the best way to find stillness is to go nature, to go into nature. And I started to meditate on the question, what does life want from me? And um, at one point, I mean, the, the, the answer didn't come immediately. I started walking and walking and walking. But after a while, um, I, uh, it started to rain really hard and I was in, in, a, in a big uh, park, started to rain really hard and I was just walking, meditating on the question, what does life want from me? And really nothing happened. So I thought, you know, I'm going to send Eckhart Tolle an email to tell him that it doesn't work. So I was not thinking about the question anymore so much. But it started to rain so hard um, that uh, I had to run in order to, to, to find a shelter of, from the rain. And there were uh, five big trees, and I was standing under those trees. And when, and when, I, was, when I was standing under those trees, I, I still don't know what happened, but I had this very painful feeling in my chest. And I thought, oh, my God, um, I'm, I'm going to have a heart attack. I'm, I'm going to die. It, it was so powerful, that feeling. So I thought, this is it. My life is over. And I immediately thought, okay, this is probably what life wants from me. You know, boom, it's over. Um, and uh, But... If I would just describe the feeling, it was like there was a bone in my heart and it broke. And I even heard the, 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 the noise of breaking of something. And right after that happened, I started to cry like I never cried before. It was very powerful, very overwhelming. I started to cry, 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 cry. And when I was feeling this, I was crying because I was feeling this overwhelming feeling of love and grace and, 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 and gratitude, and it was so overwhelming. And while this was happening, like a download, the idea came to me, you have to make a film about the heart. So it came to me like a download because I was meditating on the question, what does life want from me? Um, and um, so this feeling was so powerful and, you know, it's just like falling in love. When you fall in love, you know, you know it, right? You, you, you will just follow that feeling. And it was so powerful, so I decided to uh, to to follow this feeling and to start uh, producing a film about the power of the heart. And the first thing I did was, of course, okay, you know, I, you know, if you start to study the heart, and you know, again, if you look at all spiritual traditions and religions, it always has been there as a powerful source of wisdom and intelligence in all our spiritual traditions and religions. So I thought, okay, I, I should look for ambassadors of the heart in our time. And one of the first people that came to mind was Paulo Coelho from uh, Brazil, from The Alchemist. I don't know if you've read The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. It's one of the most famous books of our time. I think Paulo sold over 100 million copies of, of The Alchemist. But The Alchemist is about a shepherd boy called Santiago. And he goes into the world to try, you know, he's trying to, to make his fortune in order to, to marry uh, the, the woman he wants to marry, uh, but he first needs to make his uh, fortune. Uh, but uh, while he's on his quest, he uh, discovers something deeper. He starts to discover what I would call his, his power of the heart. Um, and so, so I started to interview Paulo Coelho, and then I also interviewed Isabel Allende from Chile. I don't know if you know of Isabel Allende. And of course, I, I interviewed uh, Eckhart Tolle um, because you know he started, he jump started this whole process. And then I, I interviewed Deepak Chopra, and I interviewed uh, Maya Angelou in in in, uh, in the United States. She, she, my, I interviewed Maya Angelou a few months before she passed, but 
I'm a European, but I discovered that in the United States, she was, you know, on, on the Martin Luther King level in terms of how, how people loved her and appreciated her. She was the uh, American Poet Laureate. Uh, she was given the highest civilian honor uh, by Obama. Um, Oprah Winfrey always called her her mother, sister, friend. And, and she, she has this unique position, I think, in American society, Maya Angelou. And um, so all, the, all those people uh, who, whom I consider to be uh, ambassadors of the heart and it was very interesting that they all opened up to me and they all I interviewed all of them in their personal um, homes um, and you know sometimes I spent days with them so for me uh, it was a miracle that they opened up their their houses and their homes um, and um, to talk about the intelligence and the wisdom of the heart and one of the most beautiful things I think was what Paulo Coelho said when I interviewed him in Geneva I said you will never, ever, ever reach your full potential if you don't open your heart. So what happens, I think, if you open your heart, you start to access an other field of reality. There is an other world out there and you can access it when you start to open your heart. And what is also very interesting is that research and spirituality are actually being bridged if you look at all the research of the power of the heart. We went to an, an institute called HeartMath. Uh, it's in, in California. And um, HeartMath is an institute that does research on uh, the physical heart. And it turns out that um, when you are in a state of heart coherence, this is a state where we experience love and gratitude uh, and appreciation, and they can actually measure this. If we are in this state, then um, the heart is sending signals to the brain and the brain opens up and, and our left and right brain start to work together, actually. So we use more of our brain potential when we are in a state where our heart is open, where we experience love. So we actually become more intelligent when we experience love because we use more of our brain capacity. And uh, they also showed us, and it's also in the movie, the first scene of the movie, you see that uh, there's an experiment and this experiment has been done in many independent laboratories all over the world that um, our heart actually can see into the future. And they've done this experiment many, many times. So, and, and you know, our heart can see the future, uh, can see into the future. And this, of course, corresponds with what all the spiritual traditions have uh, been saying about the heart, that the heart is an intelligence that transcends the heart. So it, it was a complete journey and a complete transformation for me. And I, I started, you know, by, by meeting all these um, uh, great spiritual teachers uh, and scientists, I start to discover, okay, there is really an intelligence of the heart um, that is uh, amazing and that we all should discover. So um, I, uh, this is the book here in paperback and I see that, and that there's Paulo Coelho there in the book. So it's, uh, yeah, it, 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 it really became a journey into um, what the heart is. And I said, okay, I want to make this a very practical book. So if the heart really is uh, and, and wisdom and intelligence that transcends uh, rational thinking, then I want to know how can I use this in order to improve my um, personal life? How can I improve my health? How can I improve my uh, financial life? How, how can I improve my relationships with other uh, people? So all the areas that are really important. So the, the, the whole book is in divided in very practical chapters and every chapter um, uh, discusses one important topic uh, in our lives. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> as you were chatting, I was going through the book and I'm just showing a few pictures because the people that he's, <clears throat> you know, sometimes we know, yeah, there we go. <laughs> and, um, we did a screening. We really, from, do you remember in San Francisco? That was amazing. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Baptiste and Isabel Allende and I did an event in San Rafael, California. That was absolutely, you know, scrumptious and at Unity and Marin. And, uh, but what I was going to say is at any age, I feel uh, we can tomorrow, today, no matter if you're 20 or 80 or whatever, if there's something that we decide or that comes to us like a download, um, I'm just fascinated to see that we can then activate that and do that in our lives, even though it feels like such an, an impossible thing. Like for you, Baptiste, you were being a lawyer. That was your world. That was your training. That was your life. The movie industry, the writing industry, the being an author, being a producer, that was not even anything you ever even thought you would do. No. And so the minute 
the second that, or this experience that you had, and then you, you just said yes to it. And then the people who came to you, I mean, I'm looking at this Michael Beckwith, you know, you had Marianne Williamson, you had, as you say, Maya Angelou, who was, was not really doing interviews at that time. Paulo Coelho, um, Joe Dispenza, Marcy Smirnoff, you have so many people who came to you to say yes. And then doing the movie with, with Drew, who, you know, of, of the secret fame and everything, who came in and created this, this astounding story, as I was saying earlier, about the, uh, the process of one single soul um, who was a beautiful African woman in Rwanda, who then, uh, Isabel, I mean, um, Immaculate Ilikaziba, who then went through the entire process of the Rwandan genocide, who did live through it, who went through so many aspects of forgiveness. Again, I'm saying the big top of the show, for you to bring that, for you and Drew to bring that and all the people who you gathered because it was like you were that tuning fork, you were that beacon. If it hadn't been for you, this book and this movie never would have happened. So I am so grateful to you that you allowed your heart to break open so that we can all have this gift. Yeah, outstanding. And I, I love, <clears throat> it's funny, I think this is something we've never shared, Sunny, with you, but it's funny because I, I changed my life <clears throat> because I had an experience, an experience, an spiritual experience. I wasn't looking for my life purpose, but I found it. But when you were explaining it, uh, I was just with you and I, I, I was just reliving my, my experience. It's, it's just amazing the way, the way the world works and that you that we were supposed to meet today and we were supposed to share uh, an audience and a story together today. Um, but I, I agree with you, we, at Mindalia, we love to help people with very practical ways, very practical ways, because at the end of the day, you know, we deal with our lives, like it or not, you know, our lives are not perfect. We are in pain, we are suffering, we have challenges, and we like to help people. Uh, I, I, I'm impressed about the list of all the people that you obviously interviewed. Thank you, Sunny. Uh, amazing list. Uh, but what, what, I mean, for someone who is so stressed, who is so into like living so many else's lives every single day, what would be that piece of advice that you, you, we could maybe start talking about so, so that they would start changing today? Well, this is a question I get all the time. I, I, I've been doing screenings of the power of the heart uh, all over the world. And uh, every time I hear the same thing, uh, I hear that people are saying, yes, uh, I would like to um, change. I would like to have more um, peace. I would like to live a life that is more in tune with, with my, my, my spiritual desires. Um, but what I've seen, and you also see it very clearly in the film, all the people that I've interviewed were not so interested uh, in going to the heart. Uh, they were all trying to fit in. They were all trying to live a normal life. They were all trying to uh, live according to the, the rules. Uh, they were all trying to please their, their family, their society. Um, but all of a sudden, um, there is this big crisis in their lives, and they have no choice but to listen to their heart because the crisis is so big um, that their rational, linear, logical thinking can't help them anymore to get out of that crisis. So uh, every time um, when, when they ask me, okay, how do you connect with the heart? I say, you really need to have that intention to do it. And I think intention is the golden rule on steroids. So if you really make it a priority in your life, then uh, it will come. But all the people that I've interviewed, if you know, Paolo Coelho or Eckhart Tolle or Isabel Allende or Maya Angelou, they all went through a crisis first and then they discovered this inner wisdom. So it was never a choice. It was the same with the Buddha. Everyone thought that the Buddha was looking for enlightenment. No, the, the Buddha was not looking for enlightenment. The Buddha was looking for a way out of suffering. So, um, so you really uh, need to want it. And it only starts when you really start to see, okay, I'm in such a deep crisis. All the old programming and all the old thinking is not working anymore. I need to really change it. And you cannot live from the heart just a little bit. It, it, it is a completely groundbreaking transformational decision 
and you see it so well, of course, in the movie with uh, Imakuli Ilibagiza. Um, she is in, in a genocide in Rwanda. Um, her family is already murdered. She's just trying to survive, but she also realizes that her family is murdered. And um, she feels so much anger for the killers uh, of, of her family. And the anger is so uh, painful, uh, so painful that her body cannot even contain the anger anymore. And she says, I feel so much anger, um, but my, my, my body is going to explode from, from this anger that I feel. And she, she is Catholic and she starts to pray. And she says, God, I, I don't know how to let go. I don't know how to forgive, but please show me how to forgive because I cannot live with this anger anymore. So she surrenders and then the wisdom flows into her because she surrenders. So if you really want to live from the heart. You really need to surrender. That's the only way. Um, and um, so it's it, it's not um, it's it's not something you do just okay I, I will do it now it really has to be a transformational decision uh, that, that that is that is my answer yeah well may I uh, may I as you were speaking I was thinking about what's going on in the world and there are many things that are just not working and um, and uh, I I believe that there's sort of a crisis of it. There's a spiritual sacred crisis going on of the, you know, of our, of our hearts uh, because of the way that things are, are going. Um, and I feel, I've been feeling even with the fires that are going on in California and just so many things that um, I hope this isn't indelicate of me to say, but I feel like there's so much being taken away from so much, so many of us um, or the shift, the, like you were saying, the regular way to do life, the normal way that we've been doing life is, um, is for many of us being taken away. And so there is a, with that crisis, there is that opportunity to say, what is really for me to do? What is really for me to feel? What is really going on here? <laughs> and, and in that moment, I mean, and we don't necessarily want it to be that everything always has to be a crisis to get better. There's that too. It's like, well, can we go through it without so much pain? Or I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. But I do know that right now there is a lot of pain. There is a lot of sadness. There is a lot of ripping away of, of the old. And the new maybe is something that we're just in the middle of discovering what is going to be our new way of, of being in community with each other and with ourselves and with our ecosystem of our body? You know, it's a question I ask both of you guys. Well, I, I wanted to um, um, say that because I, I think I can give them maybe more practical uh, answer to your question. Um, um, I, I, I first wanted to make the point that um, it trans the, 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 it, you really people go to to the heart and make this lasting connection when they have suffered so much that they say i want to make a change the other thing is what can pe what people can do without um you know you don't need the crisis and i want to make that very clear it's not it's not something that you really need to have in order to go to the heart but if people are stressed in their daily lives and they want to go to the heart the first thing that they can do is um what i think uh, go into nature start walking um, because I think in nature uh, you can hear your uh, heart. Another thing that they can do is uh, put themselves in a state of heart coherence. So how do we do that? Um, we, we put our uh, hand on our heart and we start to connect with our heart. We start to feel our heart. And um, we start to um, cultivate feelings of gratitude, of appreciation. Start to think about the person you love most or your favorite uh, animal. And you start to feel this feeling of love and gratitude for this person or this animal that you really, really love. And what it, uh, it really starts to uh, create oxytocin uh, in your system. And oxytocin is what we call the love hormone. And when we start to um, feel love and gratitude and appreciation in our heart, our whole system starts to um, relax and become calm and our brain starts to open and we become centered and our left and right brain start to uh, work again or again uh, together again and we start to see solutions that we will not see when our when we are not in the state of heart coherence when we're not in the state of love and appreciation and this happens all the time when we are stressed 
and we were when we are in a state of, um, of fear then our brain shuts down our heart shuts down and uh, we start to yes uh, use less uh, of our brain capacity and and we know it all the time when we maybe at university when we are doing a big uh, exam uh, you didn't know the answers uh, before you did the test uh, you knew the answers but during the test you didn't know it because you were so nervous and fearful and your brain starts to shut down so if you want to become centered and if you want to see through the situation and if you want solutions and answers then the best way to open up your brain is actually to put yourself in a state of heart coherence so this is what we can do what also puts us into connection with our heart is um, you have to you have to look what you really love to do paulo coelho said i connect with when, when, with my heart when I am uh, riding, and, and um, Isabel Allende said, I connect with my heart when I am riding and when I'm playing with my dogs. And she said, I connect with my heart when I'm making love um, to, uh, to my husband. That's what uh, Isabel Allende said. And Jane Goodall said, I connect with my heart when I'm in nature. And um, some people said, I connect with, with my heart when I'm playing the piano. And other people said, I connect with my heart um, when I am uh, dancing. So there are different ways to connect with your heart, but everything that brings you into this state of, of flow, um, that's, that's what I say. What I do, because I'm all the time, and I'm in airports most of the time, I just uh, practice uh, bringing myself uh, into a state of heart coherence. Yeah. Mm. It's in the book how to do it, but you know, at one point, you start to feel love and appreciation in your heart and your brain starts to open up and you even start to you start to feel like twinkling in your brain uh, there's a very strong heart and brain connection the more we the more we experience love the more intelligent we become Ooh. yeah you know i was just working uh <clears throat> with a uh, a brilliant cardiologist and unfortunately he just passed away in june uh, and um, later I'll chat about that book on another show. But the thing that he discovered, and I don't know if either of you guys know this because it's a brand new discovery, and that is the shape of the heart. Um, for many, many years, you know, of course, medicine is always re-upping their knowledge because it's just the way it has to be. And the heart shape, they used to think was a certain shape and it's actually get this it's a spiral isn't that fantastic, yeah, fantastic. they're just discovering this and so that's why some of the the issues with the heart has been a problem as far as surgeries and things because they weren't actually knowing the shape of it they were treating it slightly incorrectly because it wasn't actually a spiral they were creating um medicine for kind of a four quadrant concept and so we know so much about nature and there's so much about the spiral right now um, in our in our kundalini in our the shells in in our dna there's so many aspects of the spiral so when i found out that the heart was a spiral that i just thought that rocked <laughs> so i want to share that with you guys mm -hmm. yeah i have i have a contemplation um that i would like to share that's in the book uh, the power of the heart and it helps you to connect with the heart and also to connect with its wisdom. And um, it starts like this. Sit, some, sit quiet to allow your body and mind to get in sync. And we are sitting here quiet together. And um, take three deep, slow breaths in and out to quiet your mind. And do that two more times. Bring your attention to your heart so that you can hear your heart. And the heart is the seat of the soul. That's where we um, receive the signals of our higher self. And uh, bring your attention to your heart so that you can hear your heart. As you bring attention to your heart, you gain access to the heart's intelligence. You increase its availability. Focus on your heart. Your heart starts to become adaptable and flexible. Focus your attention on your breathing as you breathe in and out. If any thoughts and worries come up, just allow them to float away as you bring your attention back to your breathing. You are giving your heart space in which to speak to you. Focus only on your in-breath and out-breath. 
So breathing is a great way to connect with the heart. Breathe in and breathe out. And then breathe in through your heart and breathe out through your heart. And this is a very powerful way to put yourself into a state of heart coherence. And then when you feel quiet, put your attention on your heart. Ask yourself these questions to connect to your heart's energy. The first question is, what makes me happy? What do I love to do? What brings me joy? What are my passions? What inspires me and makes me feel fulfilled? Now ask yourself, what keeps you from connecting? What keeps you from connecting with your heart? What am I spending my time doing that does not make me happy, that keeps me from joy? Now ask your heart, what can I do to get beyond whatever keeps me from connecting with you? What small or big steps can I take? How can I feel inspired and fulfilled? And then, you know, meditate on those questions and open yourself to receiving your heart's answer, even if you are afraid of hearing it. Your heart will let you see the truth and help you find your way. And your heart has all the answers. So if, if, if you start to connect with your heart and you start to contemplate those questions while you're connecting with your heart, the answers will come. Just when I ask the question, what does life want from me? If you stay with it, the answers will come and you, you will know it's the right answer because there will be a very powerful, overwhelming energy of love and, and grace. Beautiful. Yeah. Really beautiful. <clears throat> I think this is a, I mean, this is definitely a, an experiment that everybody has to or can easily like practice and, and, and join in and tune in. Um, <clears throat> yesterday, I, I, I was giving a talk. I, I was invited to a country club here in Dallas and I was um, sharing with, uh, I had 20 executives sitting around me and I never like to talk about business and what I do for a living, like for profit. I always like to talk about things that inspire me, things that I have found in, in my life helping executives. And actually, I made them breathe. And, and, and we talked about intuition a lot. So when you were talking about going to your God, it was funny because of everybody. Everybody joined in, men and women. But there was a gentleman. There was this one guy. Was, he was so skeptical, <laughs> you know. He was, you know, like I, I'm, I'm an empath. So I could like kind of read in his face, what is this guy making me do? I mean, I came to this country club to learn something about business. This guy is making me close my eyes. Come on, give me a break kind of thing. You know, but uh, it's, it's true. It's intention. You, when you said intention is, 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 is the beginning, you know, you really want to do it. You really have to want to do this. You really yeah. have to, you know, because if you just do it, okay, let's see if it works, you know, let's see if it, if by any chance, you know, today is the lucky day, it's like you, you know, I mean, you didn't know it was going to rain. You didn't know it was going to be pouring cats and dogs to you that day, right? It was just, you know, you were there and and, and it happened. Well, you have to go go all in. It's so beautiful what you said. There's a this chapter here. I don't know if you can read it. The power yeah. of intention and intuition. So there's this big connection between intention and intuition. If your intention is coming from your heart, then your intuition will start to work from you. We can have an intention that's coming from the personality, the ego, um, but if the intention is really coming from our higher self, our soul, then our intuition is involved because we are we are following the intention of what our higher self wants from us. And there's, there's a lot of people live in this big conflict because here, is what the ego wants or the personality, and here's what the soul wants. So my ego wanted to be a hotshot lawyer in Amsterdam, but my soul wanted to make this film and and, 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 and fulfill my soul's purpose. So if, if those two are not aligned, you will have a lot of suffering and a lot of conflict. Um, and um, you can only uh, become whole if your 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 personality starts to serve the energy energy of the soul and and that's what gary zukov he's also in the project calls authentic power and uh, it's all in the book the seed of the soul creating authentic power but it means that your personality starts to um uh, uh serve the energy of your soul and it's very 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 
powerful when you start to do it. And um, we all love Oprah Winfrey, but if you look at her life, her life is one big miracle. She was born in Mississippi. Um, and um, in her own words, Mississippi was the most racist state uh, at the time in the United States. And she was as poor as you can be without having a roof over her head. And her mother was a maid and her uh, grandmother was a maid. And she was basically groomed to be a maid as well. And um, her, her grandmother said, Oprah Gale, because Gale was her second name, I hope you find yourself some nice white folks to work for. So her programming was that she should be a maid as well. But actually she became one of the most influential people in the United States. She became a cultural icon. So how is this possible? And it is possible because at a very early age, she, she realized that she didn't have a lot to live for. And she said, because she believed in, 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 in God, in, in, as she was, she was part of the Baptist church, she said, God, I have not so much to live for. Use me, use me, use me, use me. And if you say, use me, then you start to align with this energy. You give up your personal um, intentions and you give them to your higher self. And that's when the miracle starts to happen. That's when your intuition starts to work. That's when the synchronicity starts to happen. That's when you start to uh, meet the right people at the right time and everything starts to flow. And that's what that's that's the only explanation for what Oprah Winfrey did because she she is the embodiment of uh, what I call authentic power, and that's why she, you know she connected with 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 Eckhart Tolle so much when he said, "Don't ask what I want, but does for me." And that thing starts. I think that's what the power of the heart is: that you start to live from the intention of your heart, from the intention of your your soul, and then you become unstoppable. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so powerful. Well, yeah. So powerful. And, I, I, it's about, and all the people in the book are examples of that and if you start to examine what they do then you can do it as well because there's they have so much in common and but what they all discovered is the real intelligence is here and this intelligence is actually um, directing the head um, but you have to understand the relationship between the head and the heart the, the the head we made the head the master in our education but the head should be actually the servant of the heart. If you really understand that the heart should be the master and the head should be the servant and the head, and at, at one point, and I, I think that's why science is so important. What you see in uh, the science of heart math, uh, those scientists shows that the heart is actually the master and that if you open your heart, then your brain opens up as well. So it actually gives your scientific uh, linear brain permission to believe in the power of the heart if you really look at the science then you know because we are so educated to 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 first we need financial proof uh, sorry we need um, proof we need research uh, before we start to believe in uh, something we need scientific uh, proof and uh, the research is showing it the heart is actually more intelligent and we can only tap into that if our heart starts to acknowledge it and starts to surrender to this intelligence mm -hmm. well incredible i i um it's it's funny because you mentioned a lot of people that both uh <laughs> sunny and i we love dearly and we follow dearly i went i i, I follow i have followed dr joe dispenser for many years and i have been to his workshops when you go to one of his workshops and his advanced workshop Actually, he he teaches you to activate, you know, to align your chakras and to actually activate. And he always talks about vortexes all the time and spirals. If you see his books, there's spirals everywhere. And he and he actually, you know, he makes you, you know, really uh, focus on your heart and and from your heart, among all, many many meditations he has. He makes you generate this vortex of energy from the heart. So I'm not surprised, Sonny, about what you just mentioned, that they found out that the heart has this shape. I mean, no wonder this is, this is what it is. And, and I have already interviewed three, three people, two gentlemen and one lady. All three have cured from cancer thanks to Dr. Joe Dispenza's meditations. Yeah. Three. And there's many more. You know, I'm, I'm sure that if, if you if you have a relationship with Dr. Joe, you know that he has plenty of testimonials out there. In the, in the book as well. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, the more the more you show the book, you know, I'm, I have so many books to read, but 
the, the more you show the book, the more I like it. You know why? Because it's it looks like so easy to read, like so, so, so easy to read. It's very practical, yeah. It's I, I always say, why learn it if you can't apply it? So I made it into a very practical book uh, with, with chapters that are very practical. Every chapter is about one area in our life. Um, we have uh, um, the heart and money and career, the heart and health, the heart and love and relationships, the heart and resilience, fear and setbacks. And uh, you know, we, we are all going through challenges and setbacks. How do you deal with it? Um, and how do you apply the wisdom of the heart? The heart and forgiveness. Um, so it's all about how can you really apply this wisdom of the heart in all the important areas in your life. I'd like to read one thing. I just opened the book as we've all been chatting. I've been sort of flipping through the book and looking at pictures and things. And I, I just sort of opened this. And this is something that Michael Beckwith says um, in the chapter of The Power of Gratitude. He says, when you begin to live at that level, uh, the universe responds to that field, meaning that's all gratitude. And then more and more and more things to be grateful for show up out of nothing. And I, I love that because it does feel so magical, you know? And at times, uh, Angel, you were asking earlier, you know, how we love to bring practical steps to, to the Mandalia TV uh, family. And I think of um, how there are times when people feel that they are in a place of nothing, you know, perhaps not so much hope or not so much money or love or, you know, whatever it is that they feel that they don't have. And so even though we know spiritually, the three of us here today, we know there's never really a case of nothing. It, it's never that way, really, truly. But at the same time, it can really, really feel like that. And so to be able to know, um, Baptiste, what you brought with this book, that somebody can really be in a place of despair. God, it just makes me cry. Um, and they can know that, that they can actually use these steps and, and bring in something out of nothing. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. It made me cry, by the way, too, when you were doing the, the ceremony with us or you were going through the, the steps with the heart. It just <laughs> made mm -hmm. me cry, too. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think, I think, uh, you are such a big fan of Joe Dispenza. There's there's something he says in the in the in the in the book. And Joe Dispenza says, you know, once you connect with the heart, he says it's an interesting moment because when we slip when we slip into this place and we feel so whole, we would never want anything. And that's the moment when we make it to this place that we are at the kingdom where we can have anything, he says. And when we finally arrive there, we no longer want it. And that is when miracles begin to happen around us. And the organization of the universe begins to show up in new and unusual ways. So that's exactly what I'm saying. When you connect with that place, then everything falls into place. Eckhart Tolle says, when you get the inside right, the outside falls into place. And I think Jesus said, um, seek first the kingdom of heaven within, and then all else will be added unto you. So um, if, if we first find that consciousness, that awareness, then everything starts to show up for us and we start to experience what we call miracles. But it's not miracles. It's just part of the natural law. When you connect with love, uh, those things are just uh, a consequence of being in alignment with that, with that vortex of love. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's amazing, but we, we already we are at the end of our hour. It's incredible how... 60 minutes go by when when there's something said so amazing to talk about like baptists lives and example to the world so um where can we find you where can people find you baptist before we go yeah. so th there's I, I would like to give 10 gifts um our our, our, our website is uh, in, in in spanish the book is el poder del corazón uh, the power of the heart um so the book is also yeah, it's out in 45 language languages it's also in spanish for for you know your audience um, and, and in English, of course, it's the power of the heart. The website is thepoweroftheheart.com. And I would like to give 10 freebies of the film per email. So uh, of the people who are listening, the first 10 people that would like it, you can drop me an email at a Baptist. That's B-A-P-T-I-S-T. -T, so that's my first name. And this is how you write my first, uh, my, my, my first name, Baptiste 
at thepoweroftheheart.com. So the first uh, 10 people that are listening right now that send me an email will get uh, the film in their mailbox and they can watch it anytime they want. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Wow, this is amazing. You are yeah. so generous. Thank you very much. So and we know, Angel, I would uh, like to send it to you as well. So if you give me uh, your email, oh, uh, thank you. Later on, <laughs> watch it. Thank you very much. Amazing. Uh, I I know what we're gonna do tonight with all the family. I have three kids. We're gonna watch the movie tonight. I can I guarantee you that. It's okay. amazing. Okay. So thank you very much for being thank with us so today. Much, uh, thank you so much for having me. It was a privilege and an honor to be on your show. Thank you. Thank you. Sunny, where can we find you? Come on. <laughs> you can find me at sunny at letsimagine.live. So do Beautiful. that. And then you can also find me through Whole Life Times Magazine and ABC Talk and, uh, and like that. And, uh, well, and you can find me next Thursday here with you, Angel. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So thank you. Thank you, everybody. Again, this is Angel Rebo with my Indalia TV. Thank you very much for being with us today. What an amazing story. What an amazing life that we can have all of us if we go to back to our hearts. Have a wonderful day. We've been blessed to having you. See you soon. Bye-bye.